first book review. I don't even know what to do in a book review. Look at the book. Oh my gosh, it's longer than I thought it was. Yeah, but the, the margins. Meetings can be boring. They can be pointless, tedious, and downright painful. Meetings are all of these things and more, and yet, meetings are essential. As people who work with other people, we need to touch base from time to time. Instead of ignoring or embracing how awful meetings can be, why not try to make them better? That's what today's book is all about. Death by Meeting, A Leadership Fable by Patrick Lencioni. I'm Sammy, and here at Digi, we try to help progressive leaders of spiritual communities share hope, healing, and light online, and sometimes that means having helpful tools to engage those people more effectively. Yep, even through meetings. If helpful tools for more effective ministry sounds like something that would be beneficial to you, please be sure to subscribe to our channel below because we post videos every single week and we would love to help you with your digital ministry presence, your ministry in general. So first I'm going to dive into some key tenets of this book just so you know a little bit about what to expect. And then I'm going to share about how we at Digi use some of these tenets every single week with our ministry. And then I'll give you some thoughts about how it could be helpful for you and your ministry too. One of the most helpful ways that I found Death by Meeting encourage more effective meeting practices is by actually outlining different types of meetings and their purposes. This may sound like a really simple thing, but how often do we see meetings that, you know, they could have been one or two really specific focused meetings, but instead it became like a long, just like blended meeting that was less effective in general. Now, Lanchoni does a lot more than just encourage breaking up meetings. He outlines best practices for everything from a daily check-in that doesn't last more than five minutes, ideally, to a quarterly off-site retreat. Lanchoni also walks you through how to have these types of meetings, and I love the way he writes his books, or at least the books that I've read by him, because he makes it like a story. It's not like your typical personal development book where it's like, here's how you do this, here's my thoughts. It's a story that you're drawn into, and within the story, the teachings come out. Like, someone is learning these practices. Not necessarily you, but you learn them along the way too. One meeting aspect that he shares that we've held on really closely since reading this book here at Digi is to start your meetings with a sense of drama. Not like a literal drama, like a play, but like you're sharing some kind of conflict that your meeting is going to help remedy. It serves as a reminder for why you're actually there in the first place. Rather than like sitting down and easing into the meeting, like, oh, I guess we should get started and delaying it, you're invigorated because this is why you're meeting. There's purpose behind this moment. There's a purpose that solves a problem for people that we want to help. It's cool, it's different, and it's a reminder that this time is worth the energy that is being put into it, that it matters. Another piece of advice that Lanchoni offers in his book is that conflict should play a part in your meetings. Like, it's not a bad thing. In fact, he says that when a leader is constantly looking to create conflict, it invites all differing opinions into the presence, into the meeting. Attendees are encouraged to speak their mind without any judgment because we know that we want different opinions. We want to hear conflicting things. Now, according to Lanchoni, after a consensus is reached, you know, after everybody got to speak their mind about their opinions and then we decided one way or another, everyone needs to be on board, even if they had a differing opinion in the first place. But at least at that point, when there was space to share, everyone was able to put their thoughts out on the table. There's no like secretive resentment that your idea wasn't chosen. We heard it all. We decided as a team, that's what we went with. So now we're all gonna back that option. How many meetings have you been in that you felt you were not safely able to speak your mind? Lanchoni would say that that's not a healthy meeting. He would also say that these unhealthy meetings at the leadership level are a sign of a gap between performance and potential for the entire community, the entire body. Whew, that's a lot. Okay, so what does this mean for you as a leader of a spiritual community? We're gonna get to that in a second. First, I have to let you know that we have used these practices in this book for almost a year now here at Digi. But one of the most important things worth lifting up is that we have modified them to work for us, to work for our lifestyles. I think often people read a book like this and they just like can't get on board 100% with what the author is saying or suggesting. And so they either bash it or like totally throw everything out the window instead of trying to take something from it, try to learn something from it. For a book like this, it will be really valuable to just take what you can from it. You might not be able to structure your entire community's meeting structure forever and ever exactly like he wants it to be, but that's fine. What can you learn from it? So for us, the daily check-ins, we love that concept, but it looks a lot less daily for us. And 
it's really hard for us, my co-owner and I, to stick to just five minutes as a time limit. But that's okay. That's what works for us. We have also made use of Lanchoni's weekly tactical setup, and we've used most of his suggestions for what to talk about in a tactical, which has made sure that we always have something to discuss every week that we meet. You know, not like we have enough to talk about with writing an ebook and selling t-shirts and doing digital communications review and now speaking in conferences and making weekly educational content for y'all. If you're interested in like any of that, it's in our description below. We'd love for you to check it out. But we have a lot of fun doing all those things too. And these types of meetings just kind of help keep us grounded, keep us structured, and probably help keep our heads on our bodies throughout it all. Lanchoni's suggestion for quarterly offsite retreats has also been an incredible life giving suggestion for my co owner and I. It's been a gift, really. It's so easy to just get in your head with your ministry and what you're doing, and just a quarterly offsite, get away from it all, just think about things in the bigger picture. It's amazing. Okay, so how can you use this book as a leader in your community? First of all, you need to know that it is a pretty short book. I know it looks like a normal sized book, but when you look at the text and the margins and the way it's all laid out, and it really is like a story and there's resources in the back, it's a quick read. You can do this. I think one of the best ways that it will help you and other leaders like you is to help give you focus for your meetings and also give a framework for that focus so that you know how to actually live that out in your meetings. And I hope that rather than just help you focus in your meetings, it re -in Invigorates. I can't even say the word. It reinvigorates life back into your meetings. You will no longer wonder why you were meeting or meet without reason with some of these principles. We hope that this increased focus and purpose gives life back in your bones for the important and faithful work that you are doing. Oh, and seriously, do not sleep on those quarterly retreats. If you haven't tried that with your ministry, with your leaders, with yourself, give it a go. You might be amazed at what this does for your ministry and for your mindset. If you have read this book and have some thoughts, please share them in the comments below. We'd love to see what you thought too. And if you enjoyed this book review and you think we should do more, let us know because we're thinking about it. We read a lot of books. Again, I'm Sammy here at Did Evangelism. If this video was helpful for you, please be sure to like, subscribe. I'm looking below at those buttons or you should, could, you don't have to, but you could click them. Share it with a friend, read the book, let us know what you think. We brought the knowledge, your turn, put it into action however you want. Peace.